Today we're talking about AIDA. Can it be as simple as four letters? Let's find out. Welcome to the channel where we convert your ideas into cash. To get started, hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and click the bell button to get notified when I upload these videos. I'm uploading almost daily right now. Let's jump right in. AIDA stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, and Action. So I'm going to break these down and tell you how you can use each one of these elements on your sales letters and videos. Yep, it works in videos too. How you can use it in sales letters, videos, opt-in pages, landing pages, and sales letters. It all applies right here. So the first letter is A. That stands for attention. And so normally when we talk about getting attention, it's a, a headline. And that's exactly how you're going to do it. Now, the headline is the same thing in the video. It's actually like bringing to attention a problem or a hook, and I'm using Gary Halbert's sales letter here, The Amazing Money-Making Secret of a Desperate Nerd from Ohio. That's a hook. The Amazing Money-Making Secret of a Desperate Nerd from Ohio is the hook. That's like, what are they talking about? A desperate nerd making money. What's this all about? That's actually catching your attention. And how you can find out how to write these headlines, it's not real hard to find out. Just Google tabloid covers and look at the images and you're going to see all of these formulaic headlines, the amazing discovery, dirty little secret. All of these things are just hooks. You take these hooks and that's going to catch your attention. That's hooking them in. The next thing is tipping the sacred cow. The best way to explain this is this one headline here is 40 belief shaking remarks from a ruthless nonconformist. And if you look at this, this is on raptitude.com, it's basically talking about things like how God doesn't exist or, um, you know, and how they say that no get good deed goes unpunished or whatever. These type of things, those are actually going against the grain. And we're going to talk about controversy in a minute, but that's tipping the sacred cow. And the best way to explain that is just to go against everything that your audience believes right? So there is no money on the internet. Like, you know, breaking news, the internet stopped working today. Things like that. It's like, what? Now, remember this. Now, you can't just make clickbait. So whatever you do to go against that dogma, whatever you do to, to, to tip that sacred cow, you need to have proof once you get inside your sales letter. Controversy is another big one. And the best one that I have here is one marketer went against Tony Robbins and he sent this out to all of Tony Robbins's fans or friends and family, and it said, why I walked out on a Tony Robbins event. And that was huge. And the reason why everybody looked at that was because it's just controversial. Tony Robbins is this big figure. Everybody loves him, and everybody loves going to his events. It's almost like an, a, a cult, right? He said why he didn't do it. Now, what he did, to because everybody came in, hot. They're pissed off, right? They want to know what this guy is talking about. And the first thing he did was say, Hey, I want to tell you that I love Tony Robbins. He's a good friend of mine. I've interviewed him a thousand times, but I'm going to tell you why I walked out. It was just a personal thing. And it's nothing against Tony Robbins. And you probably had a great time, but here's the reasons why I didn't dig it. Right. And so he calmed them down first and walked them in, but that caught their attention. And now he's going to tell a story and that's going to walk us in to the next slide. Interest is the next letter. That's I. And that's what we want to do after we caught their attention. We want to keep that attention. So we got to get them interested. And the best thing to do is to tell a story. Remember, stories sell. So what you want to do is kind of like my guy that went talking about why he didn't like the Tony Robbins event. He actually went into why he didn't dig it. But let's go back to Gary Halbert and talk about the promise lead, which is a big one. And this is the if then proposition. So if you own or operate a business, or if you are simply someone who'd like to make a lot of money very quickly, this may be the most exciting message you will ever read. So now this is the if this, right? If this. So it's if you want blah, 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 then this is the most exciting message you will ever read. It's a simple lead in. And right after that, he goes into, 
Here's why. My name is Gary Halbert, and some time ago, I was dead broke. He's telling a story. So that's your promise lead. You're going to promise them that they're going to give them something huge if they continue reading, and then you go into your story. The problem solution is the same thing, right? So you show them a problem. If your back hurt and, and you've been having chronic back pain for years, then this will be the best newsletter or story that you've ever heard. And you want to kind of go in there, tell them the problem. My name is Sonny, and I've had chronic back pain since I was 40 years old. And then you get to telling them all of that stuff, and then you come with the solution. That's called the problem solution lead in. I actually did one where I broke down Elizabeth Warren at the time of this recording is running for, for president right now. And she came out with her presidential, um, where she's going to, she was announcing that she's going to run and it was a problem solution campaign. And I broke that down. If you click down to the link below, you can get how I broke her speech down and showed the problem first. And then I showed the solution and how that worked out. I use some of those examples. I'm kind of into politics right now. And so I've been watching how they actually write their sales pitches and believe one thing, politicians all use this AIDA. So coming around the bend, kind of getting close to the end right now, the next letter is D and that stands for desires. So now I call these fascinations because most people will say these are bullet points and they make the mistake by making these features like a feature of a product. But if you notice in this Gary Halbert letter right here, his bullet points uh, are, are actually fascinations. Are you a salesman who needs more leads? Are you a housewife who needs a simple way to make a lot of money? So he's asking questions here. Do you have furniture, store, restaurant, a car dealership, a hot dog stand, blah, 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 right? So he's asking these questions right now. Do you have a house that you'd like to sell, a thousand houses, a car, or a boat? So he's asking questions here. But the main thing he does later on, and I'll show you that in a minute, is that he starts to tell you about the benefits of the benefits. So the biggest thing that I always use is the bicycle seat. And I talk about how the feature is there's a leather bicycle seat. But the actual benefit is it's a comfortable bicycle seat and you can ride the bike longer. But there's a benefit of that benefit. So by riding longer, you're able to spend more time with family get healthier, right? These type of things. So these are the benefits to, and you can start to make them desire. You want to find out what it is that the real benefits to the bike rider is, right? So if you're talking to women and you know that these are younger women that may be single, you can say you can get fit and catch the eye of a new guy, right? Stuff like that. So you want to really dig down and find out what these secret desires are. What is it that they really want? And then you can say that your product will answer that question. The next thing in the line is proof. You can always lead with proof. Ryan Dice says that. If you want to get somebody's attention, if you have it, lead with proof. College papers, testimonials from doctors, influencers, people that are credible can come in and say, hey, this product is the product that works, right? You can also use testimonials from your customers. Hey, I bought this product. This product is the bomb.com. You buy the product as well. And showing the results, right? So you always see the before and after pictures. And my wife and I were just looking at some acne stuff. And, it, and, and on the internet, you can just Google it right now on YouTube. And you'll see a lot of thumbnails that show this really crusty looking acne on one side. And then smooth skin on the other side. Or maybe it'll show the skin being all bloody and red and discolored on one side. And then smooth with no irritation on the other side. And those are the results of your product. So imagine that you stick all of this stuff. You've gotten them with the story. You've gotten them with to get them interested by telling them a story. And you've shown them the solution of what it is. And the solution, obviously, is your product. But now they're going like, well, they're skeptical. So you want to get in the head of your prospect. You want to think what they're thinking at that time. At the time they finish reading that, they go, well, everybody says they can fix it. Well, let me show you the proof. So now we've gotten their attention. We've gotten their interest. We got them wanting the product. The next step is you got to buy it, right? So now this is the last step, but the most important step, and that's action. We want you to take action right now. And this is the whole key to direct response marketing. All the other advertisements, if you look at all my other videos, I talk about how just brand awareness never says go buy. Like let's use Coke as an example. Coca-Cola doesn't say go buy a Coke right now. It doesn't do that. It just says love Coca-Cola and it ends the whole thing and it just keeps it in your mind. So when you see a Coke, you might remember it, right? And they kind of like try to 
program you over 25, 30, 50 years onto buying Coca-Cola. But we as direct response marketers don't want to do that. We want you to take action right now and buy your buy our product today. And how you do that is telling them what to do next. So call the number below or check the button below. Click the button below. You know, send your cash, check or money order to this address. What do we do next? So if you're using this on an opt-in form, you want to say, click the button below. Now, actually, on the button, you don't want to say submit, right? That just doesn't look right. So you can just put in there, give me the loot, right? Or give me my products or give me my, like if it was some glasses, right? Let's say it was a pair of shades or whatever, you know, protect my eyes now, you know, that type of thing. You want to kind of make it an action-based call to action and when they click that button they're imagining that they're doing something by clicking that button or by making that phone call call now to save your spot spot right call now while supplies last you want to kind of just give them that call to action and make it an urgent call to action if you can make it like you know this is the last chance that you'll ever get so act now if you guys ever seen infomercials you always remember that they say act now while supplies last and you want to take that same call to action and another call to action you want to do is smash that like button man right now hit that subscribe button man if you like this video share this video with a friend comment below let me know what it is you want to learn about about direct response marketing because this is the number one place for direct response marketers on the planet period there's a video right there above, man, and I think you're going to enjoy that next video or hit that subscribe button right there. I'll see you guys on the next video.